Hi, welcome to Outside the Gym, a fitness trainer interview series by Fedbud. So over here, we call personal trainers, health coaches, yoga trainers from all across the globe. For this interview, we have Justin Perkins, who is a personal trainer and an online coach. The Lion's Den is the name of his personal brand, and his aim is to make you the ultimate hunter of all time. So without much delay, let's get started. For first question over to you. So how did you get your you know kind of fitness journey started? Uh. I started my fitness journey young, man. I, I, I've been playing football all my life. I started off as a kid. So I was about five years old. Um, and then playing football all the time. So I stayed active all the time. So that's where all the fitness started from. I used to like walk home, walk home from football practice. Once I got into high school, it was like two, three miles, walk home from two a days, get there, go back. As soon as I get back to the house, and then people, I'm like, yo, what you up to? going to practice that's all i'm doing i'm going to practice i'm working out and that's all i'm doing so that's really where it started at. it definitely started it started at a young age and then it just built off of it over time wow that's great so what you know actually led you start your own venture justin like you you know mentioned that day that you are into you know coaching coaches so uh, how has been your journey with you know coaching industry like uh, with the health and fitness industry like like you know dealing with all the health coaches fitness trainers and all so how is it like what actually you know helped you made that shift like you know what what was that what was that in, in, uh, inspiration point for you to start one to train other trainers yeah um my the inspiration was more or less um the lack of knowledge people not understanding how to get into the fitness industry online Cause you can, anybody can train someone in person all day. I can sit here and I'm like, yo, you have to do this. And I can tell you exactly what to do and put your body in a specific way. Right. But not a lot of people know how to take the in-person training to the online training to where I'm not seeing you all the time. So now I got to have my clients held accountable for their actions. So if you want results, you got to teach your clients how to, how to be accountable for it. And then you have to, to figure out, how to get your message across to them. And not a lot of people know how to do that, especially um, like when you can't talk to them all the time or if you can't see them face to face. So if I'm like, oh, you have to do this specific workout or this specific workout, people will look at it and be like, um, like, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. So if you're just online doing like an Excel sheet and sending a piece of paper workout or a PDF workout, it's not going to do anything for them. It's just going to look at it and be like, I don't know what a hack squat is, right? Like, I can't tell you how to do a hack squat on a piece of paper. But yeah. if you do, like, if you learn the online things and, like, get an app or, like, if you're able to send videos, you can demonstrate the workout. So, yo, this is the proper form. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. And you keep them uh, interactive. And um, what, what really led me to coaching coaches was, again, like I said, more or less of helping people gain the knowledge of actually doing it. Like I've already done the training in person. I've done the online training. So I wanted to give back to people. I wanted to give back to the community, especially the fitness industry. I want to give back to everybody. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's actually, you know, inspiring. That's great. So who was your fitness inspiration, you know, back then, Justin, if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I ask you like one, one role model of yours, only one till now. One? Yeah. One role model. Yeah. Uh, Mm. It's, it's a few of them out there, but if, we, if we're going to talk big names, if we're going to talk big names, um, not I, I got to say, hmm? yeah, not necessarily it's supposed to be a big name, but who has, mm-hmm. you know, kind of impacted you a lot in your journey. It might. So, so if, if I, if I go, if I go for like who, who I used to look at and my, like, yo, this dude is crazy. It would be CT Fletcher. I had to say CT Fletcher because Buddy, Buddy was just built different. Like you go through heart, so open, open heart surgery, and you just look at the doctor like, "Yo, you can't stop it." Right. That 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 mentality of you can't stop this. Like if I, I'm gonna work out until I die, so that that type of mentality was always just something to look at, something to push for. I remember he had said um, something one time like, uh, "Somebody has to be the baddest," and he was like, "Mom, I am the baddest. Someone has to be him." You know, that, that, that phrase right there always stuck with me. Somebody has to be him. Right. Yeah. Um, but as far as like just overall, I will, uh, 
I want to say the person that kept me that kept me going fitness wise overall was probably probably my son. My son kept me going fitness wise because I mean I want to I want to play with him. Like I want to run around. I want to be able to have knees when I get older, right? <laughs> so that that's who that's that's who kept I'm gonna say that that's who kept me going throughout the entire journey. That's who kept me like my motivation. Like, what I'm doing today, all right, I got to get right. I got to have something for him to look at. Because growing up, everyone's seen it as, oh, this dude's small. He got a small body frame. My father used to say it all the time. Like, we got a small body frame. We're, we're built to just be cut. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to just be cut. We got to get bigger. Yeah. We got we to gotta change the game. We got to get bigger and cut, right? So that's, that's why I want I to give my son something to look at. Like, all right, I don't just got to be skinny no more. I can, yeah. I can go do some, some different stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, your son might be looking like, you know, you as your role, uh, as his role model as well. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I will say, hold on, I can't, I can't, I can't forget my boy, Mike. My boy, so Hassan and Mike are two, two other people. Um, uh, Hassan's uh, one of my older friends. He, he, he taught me everything I know. Like He taught me fitness. He taught me personal training and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. um and mike you know you gotta give credit where credit is due uh mike my boy mike um he he showed me the fitness industry online like he showed me what you could do online like oh i'm in a whole different state but i'm training people over here or i'm in a whole different continent and i'm training people on this continent so that that definitely drove me into especially the online world personal training was on one side but the online world it had to, i had to give credit to mike Right, that's great. So yeah, how are you managing your clients, you know, before, like, as you mentioned right now, the online world. So how are you managing mm-hmm. your clients before Fitbud? How are you, like, which platform were you using or, like, what, you know, tools and tricks were you using to, you know, coach your clients back then? Uh, honestly, when, when I started off, I'm, I'm doing the whole, the old fashioned job. Like, I'm writing on pen and paper. You got pen and paper. And you got names down. All right, I got this client today or this calendar. Boom, I got right on the board. I got this client today. And you got this client. And it was a big old headache, big old mess, right? So you got that. Um, I use an Excel sheet, Microsoft Word, take little notes on the phone. Um, at some point, I was like, uh, man, I'm, I figured it out. I, I can just keep my clients in my head. Terrible idea, terrible decision. I don't tell, I won't tell anybody to do that. Terrible decision. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so writing it down was like the best way I could do it. So jotting the thing down. So I got this client today at this time, this client today at this time. And that's what I did. Um, I ended up using a platform. I ended up using, um, what was it? Trainerize. I actually used Trainerize for a little bit. It wasn't bad. I won't lie. It wasn't bad, but it was complex. It was super complex. And my clients would look at the, the, the software and be like, like I understand it, but there's so much happening right now that I just don't know what to do. So, you know, people, you have like seven seconds before the brain gets turned off and you're like, I don't, I don't care for this no more. I, this is too difficult. I don't want to do this no more. You have about like seven seconds. So if you open this app up and you look at it, you're like, ah, this is, this is a lot. This is, this is a lot right now. So that's what it was. So I, I used trend rise for like a few months, didn't work out. Um, PT Hub, I think I tried for all of like the trial, and I was like, this won't work neither. So, um, that's what ended up leading me to like fit, but like, um, it was it, like looking at it, everything overall was just way, it was more simple, it was more simpler to use and easy on everybody, like on both hands. Yeah. So, what according mm-hmm. to you, Justin, what uh, what do you think is a USP of Fitbud? Like, because you have been, you know, using the platform quite a lot mm-hmm. now. So what do you think it's like, you know, the highlights of uh, the platform which you are, you know, able to coach your clients like through Fitbud app? Uh, the highlights that I like are just the the software itself, right? So so I, I can I can only compare it to the things I've used, right? So like on Trainerize, um, it will be, you'll have like 15 different like tabs or something like that, which is insane for no reason. Um, whereas like on Fitbud, there's not as many tabs and then it's like straight to the point. So if I had to like upload a, a video, there's no hassle. Like just upload the video. And 
the fact that I'm able to to have like smaller videos and I don't have to record the the long 30 minute workout, right? So I got to make 130 minute workouts. Like who honest and in all and all, all honesty, no trainer really wants to sit there and make a 30 minute workout a hundred times. I'm be completely honest with you. No, nobody wants to do that. So uh like the the, the way it was set up and, and I, the the loops of it uh, made the videos that much easier too. Um like another perk to it is again the the fact that clients can open the app and then be like, oh, this is nice. It's it's smooth. Everything is right here. I don't have to do anything. It's all Boom, I click it, that's that. I don't have to swipe this way, swipe that way. I don't have to do anything extra. And um, it, it makes it like a, um, a easier transaction on everybody. So I would definitely say that's a perk. Um, let's see, what's another perk? Another another good perk I could pull from it. The, the fact that everything is like tracked. I can track everything. I can track your steps. I can track your water intake. I can, I can track your food intake. Um, I can literally track every single thing for my client that is needed to make them progress, right? And um, even coaching other coaches, I'm able to help them understand that, like when you when you use this part of the platform, you you also can tie in like supplements and you can tie in other things to it. So I'm able to like break that thing down to them. And let them understand that, okay, so I don't have to pull this random supplement. Like, we already have preloaded ones over here, All right? So so that definitely plays, a, like, a big part. And it makes it less time-consuming. So everything everything overall makes everything snappy and less time-consuming. Right, right. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah, Justin, like, you know, talking about your challenges, so because you have mm-hmm. been into this industry – so what was your major, like, I'll not say a challenge, challenge, like you can, you know, consider it as a challenge or maybe a blocker, which you might have faced, you know, during your journey. Like what was the most complex part for you? As a trainer? Yeah. Um, the, the hardest part as a, as a online trainer or the personal trainer, I want to make sure I'm answering this right. Online trainer. As the hardest thing as an online trainer is getting people to understand how to stay motivated. I feel like that is one of the most complex things because you can't be in front of them. So you have to figure out a new method for everyone. So I have a client over here. I have a client over here. I can't treat client A like I treat client B. Client A responds way different from client B. But now since I have the app, I have like a, have hundreds of clients, right? So I can't talk to one of my clients in South Africa, the same way I can talk to one of my clients in Canada. And it just, it doesn't intertwine. So I feel like it's, it's, sometimes it can be a headache. Sometimes it can be a headache, but um, like, it's really complex. So you got to learn like the little tips and tricks that work for you. Um, Another like little, a little hiccup that, uh, that I would find trainers, well, even myself, I find myself running into is, um, consistency when it comes to like clients on apps like uh because of the new world and the COVID and everything like that and a lot of people want to do things on their own so the consistency of people logging in and all that stuff so you have to stay up on top of it and you actually have to interact with people you have to talk with people because if you don't then they you 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 build no bond there's no bond being built there's no connection being built at some point your clients they don't I won't say they become your friends but you you grow a a, a bond between trainer and client, that trainer and client bond. And you want it with everyone. I want, I would love that with every single client. So I would find it. It's harder to have that one through online training as well, because you don't get that interpersonal experience. Right. right, right. Yeah. You That's don't get the true. interpersonal experience. That's true. Yeah. So uh, Justin, as you mentioned, uh, because like, for example, if I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a client of yours. And if I'm mm-hmm. feeling like kind of I'm not motivated enough to, you know, do my workouts or, you know, manage my clients because your target audience is your, the coaches who are there in the market. So what will be, you know, your go-to strategy for me to, you know, to, to motivate me? So what, what is the one thing which comes to your head? 
uh, that. So if you were one of my clients and you just didn't feel like doing a workout, right? I would, I would ask you, like, what, what is your drive? Like, I want to know what moves you. Why? What made you want me to be your trainer today, right? So if you just like you're feeling down and out, uh, I'll just ask you, like, I want you to look inside and figure out what it is that made you want to change, right? So. When, when I tell a client, when I ask a client, what, what made you want to change? They'll give me the explanation. Now I'll take that, what made you want to change? And then we could put this into a workout. Now we can make this workout more intense. Like, oh, I wanted to change because my, my ex said I didn't look good enough, right? But okay, so boom, that's your ex now, right? So now I want you to use that. Use that as your drive what to keep pushing. Like that? Cause that's what got you here. Right. So yeah. I want you to remember why you came here you came or, um, or I, like, I, I feel, I feel underweight. Like some people, I feel underweight. Like I feel stressed, underweight. So we're going to use that. We're going to use that momentum. All right. Boom. So you feel stressed, you feel underweight and you're just down and out today. All right. So I want you to, we're going, we're going to up your workout. We're going to get you a more intense workout. So that stress feeling can go away. Now we're starting to build your morale back up because you're like, okay, now I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. I got a little run in my system. I'm up early now. My trainer's on my tail. So yeah. he's like, all right, since, since he's on my head now, he's still talking to me. Let me go ahead and get my workout in because he ain't going to leave me alone until I'm done. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's great. So that's, I definitely, I, I rock that one out. That's how I rock that one out. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So there's this last mm-hmm. question to you for the interview. Which is that yeah. if you could have a huge billboard, like, you know, a, huge, mm-hmm. a massive billboard, what would you write mm-hmm. on it and why? It would be, if I had a billboard, if I had a billboard, I would put the the ending of the quote that's on my arm. It's on my shirt. Uh, people hear me say it all the time. And it says, uh, a jungle is still a jungle, but there can only be one king. Uh, a jungle, I would put that on the again, billboard. Come again. Uh, a jungle is still a jungle, but there can only be one king. That would go on my billboard, 100%. Um, it's a quote that came from my father, and that was like the inspiration. I won't say the quote itself was the inspiration to the line that as itself, like the, the brand and the company, yeah. um, but it definitely played a part. So I have this massive, so I have this massive line right here. This is the first tattoo, right? And this is a lion. Very first tattoo, and it was a lion. And um, the lion came because I I loved everything about it. So the courage, the 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 standing up for your family, the always being there at the right place, the right time, right? Um, I always loved lions. And then the quote, my father had made this quote when I was younger. And um, my father's been in prison um, for 25 plus years. And the quote came from him. Yeah, the, the quote was made and it says, show no mercy, look for none, seek no justice, it no longer exists. There's no revenge for anger, it's just an emotion. A jungle is still a jungle, but there can only be one king, yeah. right? So I told my father when I was a jet, I was a little kid and I was like, Pops, I'm going to get this tattooed on me one day. He's like, what? I was like, I, I want to get this on me one day. So mine is in a scroll, his is in a brick wall, mine is in a scroll. So if I get a billboard, I, w- I would put that on that billboard any day. Wow, that that that's, one, yeah, that's that's giving me you know thrills. Like yeah, that one, that, that one will stay for sure. That one will always go. It'll go on. It'll go on a shirt. It'll go on a wall. Um, I write it on a piece of paper every once in a blue. Hey, I got it right here. A jungle is still a jungle, but there can only be one king. I got it right here. So it's I keep it everywhere. That that quote, like whenever I I feel down and out or if I'm unmotivated. Just look down. I have his tattooed on my arm. Like I look down, like, oh, no, nah, we can't stop now, man. We can't stop now. We got to keep grinding. We got to keep going. Somebody has to be on top. Right. Like, like CT said, somebody has to be the baddest. Somebody got to be on top, right? So that's 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 where that came. From. Very true. Very that, true. Yeah, yeah. That's truly inspiring, Justin. You know, it's <clears throat> it's, it's been a journey for me as well. You know, I've also <clears throat> gone through a lot of hardships and all, but. This quotation and you, you know, told me like about the lion and everything. So mm-hmm. talk about a lion. You, you know, you don't have to speak much about that creature because and learn so many things. Which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, yeah. the way he walks, the way he hunts, 
his you know his walks and his his like he's beautiful also like it's it's, it's great it's great to you know have that thing yeah <laughs> Honestly, that's where the the brand name came from, man. That's that's it all started. I I can I can make that up. It it all started from when I was younger, from the from me liking the Lions, watching the Lion TV shows and stuff like that. Um, I never forget it was a it was a, a a little documentary I watched one time, and the, the Lion name was Moja, and um, it like meant number one or something like that. I, and I was like, you know what? That's that's I like that. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep this. I will never forget this, right? And that's what led me to this tattoo. Very first tattoo. And then um, when I started thinking about the company and the brand itself, I'm like, yo, what am I going to name my fitness? Like, what would I name a fitness company, right? And everyone got all these crazy names. And I was like, I, I don't got nothing like the Pharaoh or um, like Phoenix and anything like that. Like, I don't have none of these crazy names. These are exotic names. So I was like, what? would have work and i was like what's me and i looked at my arm i was like dang i got a line on my arm and i got this quote right here like what 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 could i name it about a line like what what about a line could i transfer to a gym and that's where lion then came from because um like when you're a baby cub you have to start something most of the baby cubs they start in the lion's den yeah. you start in the den when you go through your trials and tribulations it's in the lion's den when people talk about hardships throughout life, they um they talk about oh I'm walking through the lines then. Yeah. So that's that's where the name came from, the line then. So when, when you go into the gym, we're going into the den, we're gonna rock out, get this money, and we're gonna keep it going, straight into the line then. Yeah. All pain, all pain, uh, get your gains in, right? And then um when when I when I see it now and I, I see it as just like that baby cub. So I, I treat all of my clients. I'm not going to say all my clients are babies, right? But I treat them all like cubs. Some some come as like teenage teenage lines or whatnot. Some come as a little, little bit up there, a little bit up there, right? But I treat, like, I want to treat them all as like, you just got brought into the pride. You're brought into the line pride. Welcome to the pride. And you put them into the den. You bring them into the den. They come into the den. They learn. They get better. They get stronger. They get faster. And then guess what happens? Once you get better, stronger, faster, once you come into the den, now you're leaving that king of the jungle, that queen of the jungle from the core. You leave, you leave as the king. You leave as the queen. But you came in as a cub. And that's that's where that, the lion then came from as a whole. Mm-hmm. Lion then came from that one. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Justin, for today. It was, you know, great to have you on board with us for this interview.